So now we're going to careen ourselves to financial news. And if you watched our show on Monday, we brought up the discussion of hedging your bets against inflation. And me and Larry both said that owning gold is a good way you should do it to diversify your portfolio against inflation. And now, we're, gonna, now we're divided. Yeah, yeah. We, well, partly. Um, my, <laughs> consumer, my consumer specialists have always said you don't buy physical gold because they mark it up like as of right now, one gold coin at the cheapest location is marked up $135 more than what gold is really worth. So my consumer financial people always say you buy gold ETF and I've got some websites for you for where you can buy those. And it's easier if you buy that to just be able to get rid of those shares of gold than it is to, for you to try to hold, capture, and then resell if you need to physical gold. And Larry wants to give a rebuttal to that statement. Well, no, I, I agree with you in large part that that is, that is the easiest way to buy and sell gold. But the reason why I was saying that you should take physical possession of it is because in times of turmoil, when people are worried about having actual assets that are, that mean something, when people start talking about the dollars just made up, it's just, it's all numbers and it's just ones and zeros. There's no real value to it. When I say about taking physical possession of it, because people worry, say, when you are worried about having actual physical assets, gold and silver, when you buy them, you should take physical possession so that if you need to leave and go somewhere else, that you actually are taking that with you. It's not a matter of you can't get, you, it's not, it's someone can't say we're locking you out of your bank account when you have a pocket full of gold. Someone hmm. can't say, <coughs> excuse me, that we are going to, you know, we're suspending your brokerage account so you can't trade anything or your account's frozen when you have uh, another pocket full of silver. So, well, if you're going to go that route, considering how much they mark it up, wouldn't you just be better off taking the cash you would have bought gold and just burying it somewhere instead of paying a hundred and thirty-five dollar markup on an ounce of gold? No, you you try not to buy. You try to buy at spot if you can, and 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 I get it that sometimes there's going to be a markup. People have to make their money, but the point is is that you try and buy when when it's relatively low. So that as as it raises in price, you make your money up from wherever you bought it, obviously, past the point that you had to pay for any commissions and fees. I mean, you're paying commissions and fees on when you buy, if you buy ETFs, you're gonna pay your brokerage fee. You're gonna pay, you're gonna pay whatever it is you have to pay for your for your to, you know, for your brokerage to for your broker to buy those ETFs. It's, I mean, there's a but, fee but for it everything. does it doesn't equal $135 no, mark. You're, you're absolutely right. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be that. It's gonna be a percentage of the actual cost and not and not it's a point, set amount per hour. The places I found for people is 0. 0.17 cents. And okay. and the places you can get these things from here is one good site right here. Aberdeen Standard Physical Gold Share ETF. That's one of them. The other good place is Granite Shares Gold Trust. And last but definitely not least, iShares Gold Trust. This is the most trusted one. This is the one that's reviewed by most economists. They've got over $190 billion worth of gold in vaults all across the world and easy to get into less than 17th of a cent management fee that you pay to have physical gold diversified in your portfolio. I and I and I'm I'm okay with that. I just think that if anybody is buying gold as a as a hedge against inflation or they're buying gold because they are a they're thinking of of actual physical security and they're a prepper or something like that, you need to have even if you have gold ETFs, you need to have a certain amount of it in physical form on your person and you need to have take physical possession of a certain amount of it so let so me let, buy hundred thousand dollars worth of gold maybe you take 30 of it and you hold it and in, in, on your in physical you take physical possession of 30 of it and so leave, let, the other, leave the other 70 me, as etf for, for, let me challenge him on that too first of all you don't want to put you don't want to have your whole portfolio in gold you want to put maybe a fourth of your portfolio in gold as a hedge. Well, not no, I wasn't a, talking about your whole portfolio. I was talking only like if you put like a hundred grand. Let, Larry, you let me finish. Let me Go finish. Ahead. Damn, <laughs> man. Good Lord. Do I need a Rona too? 
Uh, cut so be more careful brother can't even get a country a country grammar in here let me finish yeah. i'm saying you put a fourth of your money in the portfolio and if you are a doomsday prepper as larry said is gold even really going to help you if the economy tanks so bad that we are literally fighting each other in the street because we can't use paper or electric electrical currency that's my question to you larry yeah, I think that if we are, I think that if we ever get to the point where we can't use paper or electronic currency, I think the only true currencies that are going to be out there are going to be things of physical value. And, and we have shown, it has been shown throughout the entire course of human history that gold and silver are a constant thing of value. And it doesn't matter if we're at war, if there's no paper money, whatever. If you have gold and silver, if you have physical possession of them, that you have something of value. And if we ever get to the point, let's say that you buy, let's say that you buy 30,000, let's say you buy $100,000 worth of gold and you take possession of 30,000 of it and then everything blows up and goes to hell and our current and our paper currency and our electronic currency isn't worth anything. Well, guess what? Your $30,000 worth of gold is probably going to be worth a million dollars. You are yeah. going to be extraordinarily wealthy because the, 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 the value of gold and silver will skyrocket to astronomical amounts if that ever does happen. If that ever does happen, I don't think gold is going to help you one bit. The Probably the most precious commodity you're going to have is weapons. Because when you run out, your ass is in trouble. <laughs> right. But how are you going to buy a weapon? You better have you some now. You better, and that's where gold and silver comes in. We, we might have to get like T-Streams and invest in weapons now so, so that we can have something to protect us if they try to come and take the gold. Because if we get to the point where it has all collapsed, that we have to go back to bartering commodities such as gold, silver, or whatever you got. Folks, that's going to be a very scary time. And you better have some nickel in the form of bullets. And that's when I'm moving to T-Streams' house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just think that I just think that any time that I, I I mean it doesn't matter if it's a, if it is a simple thing of having a certain amount of cash on hand or having a certain amount of gold or silver on hand or having weapons I think that whatever it is that provides a certain amount of security you should have some of that on your physical in your physical possession it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you have much more of it invested somewhere else but you should have, it's just like if T-Streams had a whole weapons depot, you know, off site somewhere in, in a city over or a few blocks away, he still would have to get to that. So he still needs to make sure he has some something in his physical possession that allows him to get to that. And I think that's the same thing with, it, even if it's just to having a certain amount of cash at your house, a certain amount of gold at your house, a certain amount of bullets at your house, certain amount of condoms at your house, whatever it is that provides you security, <laughs> you need to make sure that you have a certain amount on you in your physical possession. That's all I'm saying. I'm yeah. not saying that you're wrong. I think you're right. I just think everybody should have a little something on hand. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I agree with that. Uh, the, the, the norm, <clears throat> the norm would, would be three to six months, you know, a three to six months stash, you know, uh, some people, some people do their three to six months and put it up in the bank. It's good to have it, you know. It's good to have three to six months emergency fund that's that's separate from your general savings and checkings, as well as it wouldn't be a bad idea to have you know three to six month liquid asset as well in your immediate possession. Uh, some some place that you can immediately get to, just in case the ish hit the fan, and you got you know you gotta you you gotta have it, you know that that gives you some time to to think, prepare, and you know think, prepare, plan, and you know develop what your what your next steps going to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you if you already have if you already have like a, an emergency fund. Uh, stashed away in your bank account. That's that's fine. Um, I would I, I would definitely consider taking a portion. And you know, back in the day, Grandma used to 
put it up under the pillow, up under the mattress. It don't matter where you put it at. You, <clears throat> now they, you know, now you can get, you know, buy in wall home safes and, and all kind of stuff. And so um, you just, you want to be one of those people when think, when the stuff do hit the fan that you're not running around like a loose cannon because now your back is against the wall because you're, you, you were found wanting and now you're destitute because you didn't, you failed to prepare. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really, really important because let's say tomorrow stock market crash, the internet has some, some type of thing going on and, and banking institutions and stuff like that is down. Mm -hmm. If all you have is about thirty dollars in your wallet and a hundred grand in the and a hundred grand in the bank that's that's dependent upon one of those plastic cards and you can't get to it, your value has now become that thirty dollars that you have in the pocket because you you just don't know how quickly or how soon or when the next time you'll be able to access, you know, access your account. I know a lot of people are afraid that, <clears throat> you know, you worry about uh, people knowing that, you know, you may have stuff and burglaries and all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, that's that's a that's a valid concern and stuff like that. But, you know, there's there's things you can do to to prepare yourself or to to help. Uh, alleviate yourselves from being a, a victim or a target or something like that. Uh, because right now we really don't know what direction everything is going in. The news telling us one thing, our behavior on the outside is saying another, you know, and it's right now is it's a lot of mixed signals going out, but um, you know, you have to, uh, each one of us, we have to be responsible for our household and plan our part on how on how we make it should you know should things get really really rough so, so and, I'm and with, me, go ahead and let, and let me say this just as an example of something lamont and it and i know some people think all oh, that just sounds like some conspiracy theory stuff larry's saying you should have this <laughs> world blows up yada 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 but think about just not long ago in venezuela they had they, their economy and their and their their country started to go downhill and they had a run on their banks mm -hmm. and so even if you were doing the right things and you put money away mm -hmm. and even if you put some money away in the bank and you had some money on hand what happened was there was a run on their bank there was a run on the banks and their and the valuation of their currency took a dump on itself so now mm -hmm. let's say that you had that same thirty dollars in your pocket well, now you go to the grocery store and you try and buy food with that $30. Your $30 isn't worth jack because now a loaf of bread costs $45. Or your loaf of bread, what used to cost $5, is now, you know, $20. And so mm -hmm. your $30 just isn't worth much. And what happens is that people that were able to get out of the country and into a better place that was safer are people that had physical assets. So when you had to go to some place and you had to go cross a border and go tell some border guard, hey, can you let me out? And he's like, grease these palms and you pull out a stack of money. And he's like, I don't want this money. This isn't worth anything anymore. Your, your, your thousand dollars to me now is worth like a hundred. But mm -hmm. you now you pull out a gold coin and this gold coin that you bought for a thousand dollars now all of a sudden because the currency tanked now your thousand dollar gold coin is really worth like twelve thousand dollars now you can say i want you to let me and my whole family through and here's an ounce of gold you know yeah you're talking about a once in a million type of experience and really if you go and bring oh. a hot woman you go get a hot woman and give it to that guy he's letting you through the border too <laughs> Maybe, but then you have to give up another human being. But but it's not a once in a, in a it's not a once in a in a million thing. I mean, this this is what happened in Venezuela just just a few years ago. It's still going on today to some extent. But this is these are occurrences that have happened in various economies throughout various countries over the years. I mean, it happens almost every year. We will see that some country will go through this and there's a run on their banks. And the people that have physical assets are the ones that are able to either to move those assets and get out 
or they're mm -hmm. able to survive because they actually have something of value on hand that they can use to trade. So you that know? might that might work in other countries, but I don't believe our system is going to falter to that degree. So yeah, maybe if you live in a dictatorship like Venezuela, it might happen. But even if that did happen and you had your goal solidified in an ETF, you can get that transferred immediately. This is not this don't take 3 days to get your gold transferred in the equivalent of cash that you didn't blow a $135 markup on. So that means you bought more and if the price rose and you didn't and you took that 135 and you bought the gold ETF, you made more money. You could pull that cash and whatever the guy wants at the 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 um gatekeeper to get you out the border, you can give that to him in cash whatever his fee is. But what if you can't? What if they what if they do like they've done it when whenever there's a run on the banks, they close the banks and the federal government says we're keeping the banks closed for a period of time. So what if you think like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get my money out, but you can't because one, you can't execute a trade because they they shut down the market or two, even if you do execute that trade and get that money transferred to your bank account, you can't access your bank account because they closed the bank because there's been a run on the banks. Bitcoin. That's the whole reason for keeping Bitcoin, some of your value you can, in your you, possession. You can get it in Bitcoin too. I've well, thought, now I've, 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 been, now a different story. I've evaluated this thing left and right. And well, now, you didn't flip the, now you didn't flip the script because now you start talking about Bitcoin. That's a different form of electronic currency <laughs> and that's a different story. So there might be some, There you might have a valid argument there. Hey man, I, I got a family to take care of. Shoot, I'm looking at I'm looking at every contingency plan, and um, if we survive a Donald Trump, I think we can survive anything that's coming at us in the future. At least I hope.